Maybe. Hey, Ramel. Uh -huh. I think it's safe enough for you to walk up here if you want to step up and just feel like what it's going to feel like. Yeah. Because it kind of feels like a tree house. Yeah? You yeah. Think? So just watch the gap here, of course. Yeah. The big gap. Yep. I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh, no, don't cry. <laughs> tears of happiness, I hope. She wasn't, she wasn't kidding. kidding. There are real tears. <laughs>ever wondered that's what two tons of gravel looks like it doesn't look like that much i'm like i don't know if that's enough but that is definitely all i can carry yep perkins enterprises dump truck has arrived <laughs> i don't know about the dump part it, no no actually it doesn't dump it just it just hauls well whatever he brought the dump trucks in the past yeah season. there he is so the gravel is for doing a French drain behind the backfield section of this wall. We're going to do that in a minute. But first, we're going to put the subfloor down. Flash me. Do you feel way taller than me right now? Yeah. There, there we go. go. Step hey, on there it is. <laughs> All right. I wasn't going to say it. the air compressor on? Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's on, so... You're the glue guy? Yeah. However much glue Eric's had to put, do double that. Double it? Twice as much. He's right there, but. Okay. Yeah, whatever he said, <laughs> do twice that much. Gotcha. All right. Gotcha. Thanks. <laughs> For me. Wow, Ray. Dude, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. As we're installing this Advantech subfloor, we're going through some extreme measures to make sure that it doesn't squeak when you walk on it underneath the finished flooring, which by the way, it does it all over my house like that. There's places all on my floor where the subfloor squeaks and I have to like tiptoe on a certain route through my house when I get up early to like edit videos so don't wake anybody up. I know exactly where it squeaks so I, I do this path. Anyways, what we're doing here is using the Advantech subfloor adhesive that you spray out of this cool gun. You can read all the specs on it. It basically works really well compared to regular subfloor adhesive. And we're also nailing it with these Tetra Grip nails by Passload that are like crazy spiral shanked with glue, almost like a screw, but it shoots this giant nail gun that's like a big boy. Hold that thing up just for reference of size. And Jono's not a small guy. No. Look at this thing. It's a monster. But it's way faster than screwing. And these things hold, I think, as good as a screw. So that's what we're doing to make sure that Ramel isn't ticked at us every time she has to get up and sneak through the house. setting these sheets nice and gentle thanks to this walk plank we have set up here with these other sheets that are just tacked down we can stand on either side and just set her in place nice and easy and we're leaving that eighth inch recommended space hand me that gun Jono right here on the butt joint says it right there on the panel tacking one corner and we're going with this chalk line that's already been snapped by the way and then I'm going to the other corner on the long side, tacking that to the chalk line. And now it's held perfectly in position to our chalk line we can just nail off the field. Go crazy. So this was a new thing for us setting up this walk row just for us to walk on and then applying the first permanent row four feet out. That was definitely a lot better. Yeah. Nobody fell this time. <laughs> Not that they do. One time you did. You remember that? What? Yeah. <laughs> that was on de a deck though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I caught myself with my armpits yeah. on the joint. Like, like that. I was like, I'm cool. It's all right. <laughs> caught myself with my armpits. I'm like, oh, I'll be cool and just lower myself down and like do a monkey bar thing across the joist to the end. 
but I got like two joists <laughs> down and then I slipped and like <laughs> fell right on my back. Oh yeah. And um, luckily it didn't really, it wasn't that high, but it, it still hurt. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, we don't know what he's got. We don't know yet. Beater block 2.0. Maybe. All right. So you can stand there. It means you'll have to swing the sledge one-handed. Okay. Or someone else can swing the sledge. Why don't I swing the sledge? Okay. That's it. What a brilliant nice idea. job. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Two boards screwed together. That was brilliant. brilliant. It's only our, well, <laughs> it actually was. I'm not joking. After the 20th house, I've done Arlo is removing our board that we had for layout for these trusses now that we have our sheathing up to that and it's nailed, it's keeping it on layout and we'll continue to work our way down like that. Keep it on going. Oh, I feel yeah. like they did some measurements of the, the squat capability of a carpenter. Right. And they made the length of that gun. That's just the right length. Yeah, to get out four feet. <laughs> We're putting these sheets in, and if I take more than a couple swings at this, and it seems like the joint is not getting tight, like it's not going in the tongue and groove, it's usually a high truss making the tongue and groove not align. And this one, you can see right there, I'm gonna have Arlo stand right there. You're like my dead weight. Dead weight. Dead, dead weight, weight Arlo. And uh, hopefully that'll make it slide right in. Didn't you say there was someone you saw on YouTube putting this down without a sledge? like? Yeah, somebody Who said, uh, I think Jason said, you could you could ream one corner in and nail it, yep. and then sling it, like, pivoting Ooh. off of that one and then yeah. slam it in. Who was doing that? I don't know. I just, I don't know who it was, but, huh. I mean, it sounds fun. I'd go with the sledge, though. The OSB will not make it all the way to the end of the structure because it's 47 one half inches per sheet of coverage, right? So we put that two by six blocking in between these ends of the trusses that mm -hmm. will allow us to nail solid this strip yep. so that it is fully supported and not weak in any yep. way. I love Actually, that. I'm very interested here. Let's pull out my tape measure tool and measure how much I predicted. Uh, three inches. I predicted three okay. inches short on the first piece. All right, we'll see and how so that works out. Let me know if it's accurate or not. All right, one, two, three. Mmm, about two and three eighths. Okay. Instead of three, they were close. That was close. I think the gap, you got an eighth inch gap on each tongue? Yeah. So we, that'd be one, two, three, how many? Five eighths. Five eighths. <laughs> and we stayed. Okay, so he was right. This video is brought to you by Trend Tool Technology, and today we're checking out their Any Door Butt Hinge Template Kit. What is a butt hinge template kit, and why would you need one? Well, it's a jig that would help you to align all the placement of your hinges along the door and the jam so that they actually line up when you go to screw them together. And is that an easy thing to do? No, it's very difficult. <laughs> Even with the most precise measuring and marking that you can come up with, it's almost impossible to get them to line up for three hinges. And what's great about this template kit in particular is that it has a modular rail construction that allows the jig to be adjusted from two foot six to nine foot right out of the box. And that includes all of the standard door sizes, six, 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 eight, seven foot, eight foot, and nine foot. So yeah, pretty much any door. And the twin rail system provides unlimited hinge positions with the rail, making the jig perfect for both new and replacement installations. Also, radius hinge compatibility allows fast and accurate installation of square, quarter inch radius, or five eighths of an inch radius hinge profiles. Yes. Attachment options allow the jig to be secured with either brad awls, and those are included, or number six wood screws for maximum stability. The Any Door template has adjustable edge guides to accommodate one inch to two and a half inch hinges with either of the four present positions or custom widths for non-standard hinges. And I like the adjustable quick release aperture blocks and they feature Trend's tool-free patented thumb turn locking mechanism for fast and accurate hinge positioning. And they are really easy to use. 
And this is a complete template besides the router. It includes a half inch router bit, 16.7 millimeter template guide, a 90 degree corner chisel, and eight brad awls. It's ready to go out of the box. So if you're doing any kind of finish work with doors, you're gonna to need to put hinges on accurately. I'd really recommend this. This is a really nice setup. And if you wanna get your own any door template kit, there's a link down in our video description. It actually takes you to Amazon, so it's really easy to buy there if you're set up there already. Thank you to Trend Tool Technology for sponsoring our video. Let's get back to work. You remember back in the day when we used to just do this with a chisel and nothing else? Yeah, we could hang about two doors in a day. Mm. That was about the limit of what I could do. <laughs> it was terrible. Give me just a minute to adore the beauty of this kit. Wow. This bad? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first time I've been over here to check out the height on this corner. It's pretty tall. <laughs> it is pretty tall. Holy moly. While we're taking a quick chill out for lunch, Jono's taking him <laughs> the best one. I want to thank Huber Engineered Woods, the makers of Advantech and this Advantech X Factor. Uh, we really love their products. That's why we use them. And we've been using them for decades and they support us. So when you see a truck going down the road with a Huber made product on it, they support Perkins Builder Brothers. They also work with other influencers like Matt Reisinger and the Awesome Framers and that's because they have great products. So if you're gonna build a house, make sure to check out Huber as some of your engineered woods, like your sheathing. A little more about this X Factor is it is the regular Advantech with this yellow coating. It's an overlay, I think they call it. It helps to shed bulk water. And I did a little demonstration here I'm gonna show you. And it also helps to just look really nice to where you can mark like your cabinet layout and stuff like that. It doesn't ever gray out. It just looks super crisp you can mark on it and it's a great product too. So we're really happy to be using that on this house as well. I'm thinking they call this a gold overlay now that I'm thinking about it. Just so I get it right. They trust us to do a good job. Do you believe that? We're just a bunch of Western Carolina mountain boys up here building houses. With gold overlay. With gold overlay. Self-spacing tongue groove. Ranura El Lagueta Auto, Auto Spaceadoras. And then you got that sounded perfect. Sound like you're yeah. completely fluent. Almost like when I order a Negro Modelo. <laughs> <laughs> that was fluent, weirdly enough. <laughs> I'm going to saws off this one long truss we had. Don't know why that one was long. I'm going to put this 10 amp hour battery on my sawzall. This is going to be great. Yup. That was the uh, redneck planer crossing it up. It worked. There you go. Oh, look at this. It's amazing how much smaller or lower it looks down here now that these are in. It still looks like huge, but doesn't look so crazy now. Looks good. I'm just gonna tack this in a few places with screws so that it's all pulled tight. And then I'll come back and nail the rest. Oh, that looks cool. What? Looking down the... Yeah. Yeah, you should have to get shot. Ooh. Let's sucker for some trusses. Is this we let Jono take a break from the Thor hammer nail gun here. <laughs> he literally couldn't even lift his arms up. I bet this thing with this battery, this giant battery is like... 16, 16 pounds. 18 pounds. Yeah! All right. Oh, you're going for the low hanging fruit? Yeah. 
Wow, even the low hanging fruit isn't easy though. <laughs> Holy crap! Oh man. Holy smokes. I'm gonna go two hands. I'm out of breath from that L gun. I can't even breathe, so I'm gonna peel a few nails. I'm gonna take advantage of my, uh, oh, is it gonna work with the paper on it? Yeah, it'll work. Take advantage of that little trick here and just do some hand drives because I can't do that thing anymore. Actually, that's a pretty big. Yeah, and that'll. Uh, it's, already, it's already thin though. It's already tight on both sides. Yep, that'll help us not have to get line. ladders. You got it. It's no big deal. <laughs> Are all these good? <laughs> You ever seen that before? I mean, Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got these nice and in a bind right here. Maybe, maybe yeah, I'll you go to pick up on yeah. the end of one of these yeah. with a hammer. Just <sighs> should done one at a time there. I know. Well, I got ambitious and stuck them both in there. Yep, there we go. Jamie has a way of making things look so easy. I know. I can... He's going again. You just can't unsee something like that, you know? What these boards are going to do is transfer the load to trusses that are adjoining the truss that's getting the load applied to it. So that the trusses, in a way, act like they're stronger than they are. They're going to share the load. In addition to distributing the load from truss to truss, these pieces of two by six actually keep the bottom of the truss from being able to go side to side because it's a 24 inch tall truss. And that amount of height, if there was deflection on the side, it could actually weaken the truss and cause it to fail. That's right. It doesn't seem like that's something that could even happen, but under enough weight, it could deflect and just- Yes. It would, it would go from being like flat that way, straight up and down, yep. to flat that way, and it has no strength that way, and it would snap. That's right. That seems impossible when you it look does. at it. You think, how could that happen? But actually, if you look into steel bridge construction and the I-beams, they use some super tall I-beams. Yeah. We're talking five feet tall. And when you watch these videos they do with the failures on how the bend and how the, where it deflects and where it goes, man, they get distorted in all kinds of ways you would never imagine when they're pushed to their limit of failure. Hey, next time you're underneath a really <laughs> old, especially giant steel constructed highway bridge, Look up underneath at all the bracing. Unless you're driving. You're gonna love it. And don't look. You'll love it. You'll wanna hang out for a while. We don't want our stuff to fall. Yeah, you guys built this like a tight I've seen everybody be rocking up at sheets, who knows yeah. what. Remember when we used to build houses with zero screws? Yeah, now it's like we don't use nails, we use screws. <laughs> Arlo, do you think we should take something like a shovel and just scrape off some of these little pointy spots? I think I think it'd be a good idea. That or it, it, sometimes if you take a just take a piece of a block. Oh, like a block, yeah, yeah center block. Like That's a perfect it, you know, idea. Like yep. a, a concrete block. Let's piece. see. That might work. I was gonna get a bigger one, but. Oh, that's working brilliantly. This will just help that bit of thing stick more evenly. Well, that's what that noise was in there. Oh, what did it sound like? Well, it sounded like it was coming from up there, honestly. Oh. It sounded like somebody was scraping the floor. Oh, yeah. What are just you scraping doing? The... <laughs> I'm knocking off the high spots so the waterproofing will stick better. And I was just saying it's not too bad, but right now I can't even lift my yeah, arms. You sound out of breath. <laughs> okay. Chalk right. Here you go. We're going to mark where we think finished grade's going to be and run the waterproofing only up to that. Once it sticks to anything above grade, it kind of leaves this. I don't know, like sticky stuff. I'm thinking right around here. Okay. Eight inches down. Yep. You're higher than eight. And then let's just taper it off to nothing down there, I think. Yep. So maybe down to like two feet or something there. Something like that. 
Yeah. I think it's good. Okay. All right, Ray and I are gonna peel the top and stick the top. Uh, it's really not in the way. This isn't super tack, like it's not that hot. Let's see if it'll. All right, Ray, you stick your corner. You're in the corner, Ray. Your alignment. You want me to wrap around a little bit or? Nah. Head corner straight down the corner. All right, we'll stick it. I mean, yeah, if it's not. I mean, it's. I mean. Hmm. Be nice if it was laid out in the sun and it just got like turned into. I mean, we can lay them up on the thing for. Five minutes, yeah, right? I think we need to because this is that's just coming right off. Yeah, wow. if it rains and this stuff peels off over the weekend, we are screwed. Yeah, I, I mean, I almost think we should just wait till it freaking do we have the primer? No. There is no primer, it's no, just it didn't come in. Oh. Well, if the bitch no, is staying 3,000 for another 400 dollars a roll, you yeah, get what? Primer. <laughs> oh, this will make a difference here. Hold I'll your breath, this, boys. You can buy We decided to lay the bitchethane out on the deck in the sun here and let it heat up because it gets way stickier, like way stickier at the top. And we're gonna try it again. If that doesn't work, we will just wait because it's got to stick really, really well to withstand water, like getting in this wall. She's warm. Oh yeah, it's way stickier. Slap me with a box. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. You really know, we should probably just zip tape this top edge too, and that would I really. I think it would. All right, you drop your side down, down, down. That's it right there. Okay. But that's, that's way better than it was already. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let me get the zippy. Oh, yeah, that's. It's sticking real nice. Oh, shoot, dude. I about, I about cut myself. Oh, Holy man. crap. Oh, yeah. Have we done this before with the zip tape at the I, top? I think we have. I don't know if we've done a whole wall like this before Did it with work zip. when we did it? I mean, I don't I'm, remember. I'm it, like, well, sure. I'll just... I don't remember <laughs> it not working, so okay. I think, yeah, of course it worked. All right. So some gravel, perforated yep. pipe, some mm -hmm. more gravel. Yeah. Silt S fabric. Slope. Yeah, so I can see it now. <laughs> I guess we better get to humping a shovel. I mean, I called to order some 93 inch pre-cut studs, 200 of them. Mm -hmm. And Jerry told me that they didn't have 93s, but they're 92 and 5 eighths. What? Yes, 93s are out. Like 93 inch studs. It's not a thing anymore. 92 and 5 eighths. But what? then he said this. No, he said, hey, Western North Carolina was like the only place in the world that was using 93s. Really? And the rest of the country always had 92 and 5 eighths and 93 was never a thing. What? Okay. This sounds like uh, Well, I've been, <laughs> I've been buying 93 inch studs for 20 years yeah. and now I call today and they said no. So yeah. why would you want to have your drywall one inch from, or eighth of an inch from the hey, floor. Hey, you're barking up the want? wrong tree, Arlo. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> Ray, I stopped right there. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and just give it a big, a big dump. Just a big flip. Uh, maybe maybe one more little low. It's hard to see the holes in this, but that's the perforations. They're not very big, but they let water in the pipe. And then since this is the lowest pressure area, it's empty, water will flow out of it. Even though it's got holes in it, it hardly makes sense. JB! <laughs> Can you hear me? Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, that's good. All right, we're good here. More gravel, let's bury that thing. That's all our gravel, we're not gonna make it. So close? No, we got at least, no, we got like 15, 20 feet to go. You think one ton will do it? Just two tons? Yeah, one ton is one plenty, ton. yeah.